What's going on, Jack Sauce? Eric here, and of course, you know it's day five of the 2023 Bitter Pops Advent Calendar, man, and it's gonna come to you soon. I'm having a day. I started super early. It was up by 4.30 this morning. Had to be somewhere by 5.30, 5.45, on site, in a suit, in an office. It was, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Problem is, I forgot my belt. So I spent the whole day in office, in a suit, trying to inconspicuously pull my pants up or keep my pants up while talking to people, while serving food, while dealing with things. It was just, it's been a long day. Then I get home, I'm so excited about it. I already tore the little tab off of the 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 the, 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 the advent calendar. I'm a hot mess, you guys, but it is day five. Let's do this thing, huh? I need a beer. All right, guys. Day five of the 2023 Bitter Pops Advent Calendar. Bring it on somebody I know. Now, this just uh, just seeing this can made my day uh, uh, that much better. We just did a deep dive on these guys. It was the last big beer review we did before the uh, 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 Advent Calendar. Now, granted, that was uh, probably a month before the Advent Calendar, but that's on me. And we are back to one of my new favorite beer breweries in Chicago. This is a Castle Humilde, Humilde Cerveceria. I can't even talk today. Casa Humilde Cerveceria. This is their Nopale, which I'm actually really excited about. I'm, I, I wanted to try this. The Nopale. I didn't pick any up. Uh, this is a Prickly Pear Farmhouse Ale. So literally, guys, if you want to hear about Casa Humilde, if this looks really cool to you, just go a couple videos back. Uh, the video right before we started the advent calendar, we got a nice long conversation about them. They're a fan fantastic brewery. I love what they're doing. Uh, it is uh, Jose and Javier Lopez. They started this whole thing in 2019, literally in their parents' living room. They are now located in District Brew Yards. Uh, I still can't say that. District Brew Yards in West Loop here in Chicago, right off of Ashland. Uh, it's a great kind of brewing hub, brewing think tank, if you will. You have, of course, Casa Humilde in there. Uh, you're going to have around the Ben Beer Company, Twisted Hippo, and Burn City Brewing. All self-pour tabs. Uh, Lily Q's got barbecue going on. Could be Jack sauce, but, you know, hey, nobody's perfect. Uh, but all sorts of really, really cool things. They do some really, really cool stuff. Uh, they are really all about making classic beers, uh, really, really well-made craft beers, and then kind of giving it their take on it uh, using uh, the flavors of their heritage, uh, uh, Mexican flavors, uh, uh, Mexican traditional flavors and whatnot. And they do such a great job. And they're doing that right here with the nopale. The nopale itself, nopal, nopales, if you will, it is a cactus pad. It's a cactus. Uh, it, it's used in... Uh, Take this out of my lap. I, I need some. I need free range. You know what I mean. It is a cactus pad. It's used in throughout Mexican cuisine. Uh, the cactus pad itself is edible when it's young, especially. It's very tender. Uh, has a flavor. Acts. You really can treat it a lot like you would an asparagus, uh, green bean. If you're into okra, that kind of thing. They pickle it a lot. It's used great for tacos. Uh, has a very tart kind of citrusy flavor to it. Uh, a little bit of bitter. Texture of a bell pepper would be the best thing. But what's really, really good, and it's obviously saying it right here on the can, the prickly pear, this is the berry of the cactus, right? It does look like a little bit like a prayer, it does, a pear, if you will, where it gets its name, but it is truly a berry. And people will design to uh, say that the, that the flavor profile uh, uh, is just all over the place, right? Some people, everybody will agree there's some sweetness, some tartness. It's really flavorful. But people will say there's bubble gum. They'll say it tastes like a melon. It tastes like pineapple. It tastes like a kiwi. Uh, I get a lot of strawberry. I get a lot of raspberry. I do get the pineapple when I taste it. But it seems to be one of those fruits that's open for interpretation. No matter what, it makes delicious, uh, uh, or it's a delicious flavor. Sweet and tart's really what you need to know. And that's going to be going into this beer. I would have a feeling. I wonder if they use the cactus pad as well. I don't know. Let's do our famous dead air read. It doesn't say anything on here. That's okay. Farmhouse Ale. We've talked about these before. Uh, Farmhouse Ale isn't exactly, uh, it doesn't have any rules as far as the style. Saisons fall into this. Essentially what they are, uh, they were created uh, in the Fleming region of France way back when, when the farming life was hard. And uh, uh, seasonal workers or saisonniers would come in uh, uh, during the summer to harvest and whatnot. They didn't get paid a lot, but they were given food and they were given beer. Uh, the, the farmers would make these beers with whatever they have laying around, not top end, high end ingredients, but the less, the, the last or the, the, the spent grain that they couldn't uh, sell and whatever else they could find, they'd let it ferment in there, literally in their barns or whatnot. Wild yeast would hit it uh, and they would make these beers uh, uh, tend to uh, a lot of kind of just like multi kind of. Uh, beers. You never really 100% had control of it until, of course, modern day brewing genius takes over. And now uh, craft beer people or craft, geez, 
I cannot talk craft beer brewers uh, uh, can control more of what they're doing it wild cultivated yeasts uh, um, and what they're adding to a higher end ingredients kind of giving this saison or this like natural for uh, uh, forming beer a little bit more uh, uh, of a style, if you will, but really it's open to interpretation. Uh, they tend to have a little bit more malty-like uh, uh, flavors to it, a uh, uh, nice mouth feel to it. This one in particular is gonna have some prickly pear on there. We'll see if we get the berries like I normally do, the strawberries or raspberries, pineapple. Well, let's see if we get some melon and uh, uh, bubble gum on there as well. Whew, that was rough, man. It's been a day, I'm tired. Just, I shouldn't be up that early in the morning. I'm just not built for it. That's why I'm in the restaurant business, man. I don't do well early in the morning, except for golf and apparently for getting my belt to go to to a, a, an early morning gig at somebody's office. Anyway, man, look at that color. Looks like grapefruit juice. I can smell that from here, though. Holy cow. The prickly pear is really, really cool. Beautiful. Natural yeast. Like, the yeast notes on this. So much bread, but you're getting this, like, I'm getting the strawberry. Definitely strawberry right off the bat. There are definite citrus notes as well, but the yeast, man. Like sourdough bread. I mean, I'm going to say sourdough, like straight up. It's really cool. Let's see. There's a green kind of quality to it as well. Like, like almost a vegetative kind of quality. I wonder if they did use some of the cactus bed. Who knows? Oh, what a cool beer. All right, holy cow, how do I explain this? I'm getting some funk right off the front. Barnyard funk, kind of tar almost, if you will. Straw, like hay, but it opens up into this bright, tart citrus hit, and then it goes on this roller coaster with this maltiness and this bubble gummy. I'm gonna say there's a bubble gum, hubba bubba, kind of, is that an old reference? I don't know, but. Uh, that style, bubble yum, probably another old reference. And then it breaks into, like I said, the bubble gum, but strawberry and melon. It's a beautiful beer, and it stays dry. It's not a sweet beer, but there are sweet components to it. And that's what it does. There's not a lot of hops, nothing like that. And that's, farmers ales traditionally aren't going to be a hoppy beer. And anyway, but I just can't get over that grapefruit, grapefruit juice color, man. Fantastic beer. Guys, we're going to enjoy this. I'm going to get off because I'm just making a train wreck of this thing. Day six tomorrow. Hopefully, I'm a little bit more put together. We'll see what happens. Guys, have a great evening. See you tomorrow. Cheers. How do I turn this off?